All right, so yeah, I'm in a different spot. This isn't usually what you guys would see, but let's just get over that because that doesn't matter. What does matter is that I got the Galaxy Note 10 Plus and I've been using this phone for over a month now. One thing though that I was thinking about as I was using the phone was that Samsung really pushes with the Note series the S Pen. Now the S Pen is obviously, as you guys know, kind of like a stylus. What I wanted to test out was to see if I can actually use the built-in Samsung Galaxy Note app and use that as my primary note-taking device, but I also wanted to focus it for people who are in school still because this might be maybe one day the only device you have in case you forgot your tablet, a laptop, or anything that'll help you that are usually you would take your notes in. Now there's good, there's bad. I I'm in the middle between of what I experimented with, but the way I did this one this time was that I pretended like I was taking an online course. So there was this complicated math video that I followed and I was using the note and I was, you know, writing away the way I normally would in school. And you know, there's a couple of nuances that I did not like about it. Like there's a couple of things that came up, but the plus side to the S Pen is you can get pretty detailed in what you want to do, but the downside is also what I want to mention, which we'll start with that right now. So as I was following the video online, and I was doing the math courses that I was being shown in, as well as writing the equations. One big drawback that I felt was like, in the Note app itself, okay, you're gonna have these paddings on the left and right side of the app. And that is so if you grip the phone, you're able to write without really messing up anything that you've written. The problem with that though, is because of the padding, I ended up messing up a lot what I was writing. So if I started all the way on the left side, it would kind of clear away a portion of what I wrote, or if I wrote way too close to it, I would actually just scroll up on the paper instead of writing, which I didn't like. Because if you think about it, if you have like long equations, and especially if you're using this in like math, maybe even science, if you're writing a lot, it, the, the paper itself does not let you continue to go horizontally. So if you go horizontally, you're gonna have a place where you have to stop. But if you're writing a lot vertically, you can continue to scroll up the page and it's basically an infinite page, which is good. What I don't get though is like, if you're gonna do that and have that in an app, why don't you instead let me go as much as I want horizontally as well as vertically and when I finish, the, the app itself will know just to create a custom paper border around what's already been written and that'll be your page. Instead, Samsung kind of confines you into what they think is works. And now the thing about the writing too is as I'm writing, I did not like at all that when I palm rested my phone or my hand on my phone, I covered up some of the screen. There is palm recognition on the software, so you are able to do that. But the problem is you're covering up a good amount of screen real estate. And here's the thing, I have small hands. Like I have pretty small hands for a guy. Can you imagine if someone even bigger hands tries doing that with the note? It's not gonna be a good time. So the only workaround I found was to have my palm kind of lay on the table where I'm writing and I kind of elongate my fingers and write. It's not the most comfortable thing, but that's like the best I can do. So maybe that's something to consider as well. So again, so those are the main issues that I have found, which is again, writing horizontally, the palm recognition and being able to write on the phone as well without covering too much of the screen. There are good things though. So I'm not trying to say all, everything on here is negative, but one of the good things that I do like is that you can create custom notebooks. Now the notebooks is good and bad. So the good thing is you can create notebooks for each of your classes. So if you wanna categorize by math, science, you can do that. The problem is there is no subfolders, which is a big problem for me. So even though you can put math, you cannot do math and then in the folder do math C201 or math C202. And I don't like that because every math class will be different. You're probably learning different stuff as well. So the only workaround around that as well would be if you create a math folder, color coordinate your notebooks as well, because that way you'll know it's math and it's red. Anything that's red, you know it's math. So like that would be the most I can recommend. One thing that I do like that you can do with the S Pen is if you take it out and hover over one of your notes, you can look into the content that the note has without having to open the note itself. I like that. I like features that allow me to quickly look into apps without having to really open anything. But you know, it's a perk. It's a nice perk. I like the perk. Perks are good. You can share notebooks if somebody else has a Samsung device, which would be good if you have somebody that you know has a Samsung device in your class. So you can create one notebook that you both can share and you both can write notes in it, put it in there and there you go, you're good to go. You both got notes, double the notes. It's a good thing. Now, one of the best safety features that I do like that they have is you can lock your notes. So some people do have personal information in their notes apps, which makes sense. And the best thing is when you lock it, you lock it in three different ways. You can do one, a password, two, finger recognition, and three, even with the stylus, if you have it out, nobody can just peep into what you have. So once it's locked, it's locked for good. No one, until you put a passcode, can look into your note and that's a really good safety feature. And possibly the best feature of them all, because I feel a lot of us would actually use this, is you can take photos 
and you can take voice memos and you can put them directly into the notes themselves and you can continue writing under them. The benefit I see to that is if you're too slow on writing, you know, with a pen and you want to take a picture of your teacher chalkboard, you can do that and you can put it right into the notes that you were originally writing. So you're never going to fall behind and you can reference it later knowing that that was for that particular class without losing it in the gallery of your photo app. Now, overall, do I think that this can still be the one device you take if you forget anything else? I feel like you can. There's gonna definitely be drawbacks to that though. So like my biggest drawback would be, one, what if you don't wanna write with the S Pen, which I get that a lot of us maybe don't wanna do that. I personally like the idea of it. But the other thing is, even if you don't use the S Pen and you use this just for typing, you know, your teacher might assume that you're typing or anybody else would, so you would have to let them know you're taking notes, but that can also not be so good because again, if you're writing in math class and science and you have to draw equations, so you have to write really long, like graphs and charts, that's not gonna benefit you to type it out. You would have to draw it, which you normally would do with a pen and pencil. So that's what I'm saying. At the end, I think you can do it. It just, you have to, you're gonna have to be real particular in the times that you use it, which again, if this is your only device, it might be kind of hard to do. And if you think about it, this is a $1,000 phone. You're, are you really gonna pay $1,000 for a note-taking device? I don't think you would, unless you're someone like me who loves this as a phone first and the note taking is secondary, then I can see you justifying it. But if you're buying it strictly to buy notes, there are other options such as if you're interested in maybe like the Galaxy S Tab 6 that's coming out, cause I definitely am. Or if maybe you already have an iPad that supports the Apple Pencil, there's alternatives. Are they as expensive? Sure, but the point is you're buying them for not just a phone, you're buying them strictly for the productivity that comes with them. So. You just really gotta think if it's worth it. But at the end of the day, I will give this an okay pass, but I feel like the best trial that I can do with this would one day to actually sit down in an actual lecture and actually do what I'm recommending you doing, which is trying it out for a whole class. Cause then that way I can get into stuff such as the battery life to see how long you have to top it up because you're consistently using the Note app. And other than that, camera quality, if it's a low light photo they have to take of the chalkboard, maybe the teacher has the lights dim. It's all those little things that people really should can take into consideration that you might not think of right away. But luckily for me, I do. So I give you guys the updates on that one. But all right, that'll be it for now. So thank you guys for watching this. So if you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. I'm okay with that. And if you got something to say or something you wanna recommend for another video, leave it down in the comment section. I would love any feedback.